Welcome back to another Linux video. Bottles makes it easy to run Windows applications inside a containerized environment, which means it's separate from the rest of your system. Even though Linux has some really solid open source options for pretty much any type of application you can think of, there still might be a few Windows applications that you want to continue using on Linux. And thanks to Wine and Bottles, this is completely possible for most Windows applications. Bottles also supports all your favorite game stores as well, so gamers might want to consider this as an alternative option to Lutris and Heroic. I should also mention that I've previously talked about Bottles in a previous video where I covered content creation on Linux, including video editing, DAWs, CAD software, and game engines. In that video, I didn't go into detail on how to install and use Bottles though. So that's what I'll be focusing on today. But you might also want to watch that video after this one if you want additional information. Also, if you appreciate these sort of videos, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This is the easiest way to help the channel grow, so thanks in advance. Alright, so let's get started by first going over what makes Bottles unique. Like I briefly mentioned, Bottles offers a containerized environment for Wine and other compatibility layers, which means it's separate from your system's Wine dependencies. If you're a gamer who uses Lutris, then this is an example of an application that uses your system's Wine dependencies to run Windows games. Most of the time this works fine, but every once in a while it's possible to run into an issue when updating Wine where it breaks compatibility with a certain application, and you'll either need to downgrade your Wine version or wait for an update to fix it. Also, different applications might prefer different dependencies and configurations, which can also lead to potential issues. These sort of things are rare, but they still can happen. Bottles attempts to address these issues by giving you the ability to create different containers for different applications and makes it extremely easy to switch to different Wine versions or other compatibility runners. By default, you can select from a gaming-focused environment or a general applications environment, which will have different prefixes, or in other words, different configurations by default. You also have the ability to customize these prefixes. Having different containers for different apps allows you to have even better compatibility with Windows software. But to be clear, I'm not saying Bottles is superior to Lutris for gaming, as they both have pros and cons, so I suggest trying both and use whatever works best for you. Generally speaking, compatibility with Wine is good, but it's not perfect. Bottles offers a number of scripts for a handful of popular Windows applications which are traditionally difficult to get working in Wine, but thanks to these scripts, the process is a breeze. And when it comes to other Windows applications that aren't on the list, most of them will work perfectly fine in bottles, but not everything. Some applications might have minor bugs which may or may not impact their usability, and then there are some other applications which simply won't work at all. You can visit winehq.org and search for a particular application to get more info on its compatibility. You'll be given a rating on how good compatibility is for each version of the application, with Platinum being the best. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's now begin the guide on how to install Bottles. The preferred way is to install it through Flatpak, so if you don't already have Flatpak installed in your system, then you'll need to install that first. I left the link to this page in the video description. So the first thing you'll need to do is click on your appropriate distro. Since I'm using Kubuntu, I'll go ahead and click on it here. Next, copy and paste these commands to install Flatpak. Now, although this step isn't required, Flatpak can also be integrated into your distro's GUI-based package manager. So this time around, I'll be installing that plugin to make this possible on KDE Plasma, so that we can install bottles using Discover. Next, copy this command to add the Flathub repo, and after that's done, make sure you restart the system. And now we're back, so let's go ahead and click this link here to search for some apps on Flathub. Search for bottles and click on the first result here. 
Now go to the install button, and if you click on the drop down arrow, you'll be given the command to install bottles using the terminal. Personally, I think it's easier just to copy and paste this into the terminal, but some people might prefer GUI based methods. So this time, let's go ahead and do it that way for a change. So I'll click out of here and then click on the install button, which will download a file. Now click on that file and you'll be asked how you want to open it. Since I'm using KDE, I'll choose Discover and check the box to always open Flatpak files with it. Now it looks like there's a small bug where Discover will crash the first time you try doing this, but if I go to the downloads folder and double click on that file again, this time it opens up just fine. Now I'll click install in the top right corner and wait for it to finish. Now that it's done, let's go ahead and run it. The first time you open it, you'll be greeted with this box here. So just click the arrows and then click continue to start. It'll take a minute to finish setting up and now we can start using bottles. So let's first go to the menu in the top right here and go to preferences. Here you can change various settings. Scroll down and you'll see an option for the default bottles directory. By default, bottles will store its data in your home directory. Here's the exact path, but of course your username will be different. If you want to change this default location, for example to a secondary drive, then you can do that here. But since Bottles runs inside Flatpak, which is a sandboxed environment, everything you install inside Bottles will be limited to only this location. So for example, if you install Epic Games, by default, you'll be forced to install all your games inside this location and only this location. However, it is possible to bypass this by installing an application called FlatSeal. FlatSeal allows you to get around many of the limitations that are inherent with Flatpaks, and I'll be showing how to use FlatSeal later in the video. But for now, let's continue looking at the rest of the preferences. If you click runners at the bottom, you'll be given a list of various runners, or in other words, compatibility layers. Bottles has their own custom runners based on wine. The first one is called Soda, and it's geared more for gaming. And the second one is called Cafe, which is geared more for general applications. Click on one of them and you'll be given a list of all the available versions. By default, the latest one is installed, but you can easily install older versions by clicking the disk icon here. And likewise, you can download newer versions when they become available here as well. Certain applications might prefer different runner versions, in which case you can manually assign a particular version to one of your bottles, which I'll show how to do here in a minute. Now click on DLL Components. This is where you can download different versions of the Vulkan based translation layer for DirectX. You'll want to periodically check here for new versions as well. So let's now leave the preferences section and create our first bottle. You can click this button here or you can click the plus button in the top left. Now select the type of environment you want. Gaming environments come pre-configured with GPU acceleration and a few other features by default. These settings can always be changed later and you can still run many applications inside of a gaming environment. So the environment you choose isn't as important as it might seem at first. But I'll be installing a game store in this first example, so I'll go ahead and choose the gaming environment. Now name the bottle whatever you'd like and click the create button. Give it a minute to set up and then hit close. Then click on your newly created bottle here. Now there's two ways to install an application. You can click Run Executable to select a downloaded Windows EXE file. But if the application you want to install is provided with a pre-configured script, then you'll want to use the script instead. To install a script, click on Install Programs, and you'll see a list of all the applications that have a script. These applications are all known to be difficult to install with Wine, which is why Bottles provides a script to make it easy. You'll see a rating next to each one with Platinum being the best and Bronze being the worst. Applications with a Bronze rating will likely have some bugs, but it should still work well enough to be usable. Let's now install one of the game stores. I'll choose Epic Games as an example. So I'll simply click on it here and then start the installation. This will take several minutes to finish. 
When it's done, click on Show Programs and you'll see Epic Games has appeared in the list of programs that are installed in this particular bottle. Click the play button to open it and then it will begin to automatically update itself. Now I'll sign into my account and as you can see we're now running the Windows version of Epic Games. So as a quick example, I'll install Shadow of the Tomb Raider, wait for it to download and then run the benchmark. And as you can see it's running perfectly fine without any issues and it performs very well. But in rare cases you might run into a game that has compatibility issues with your current runner. In this case you'll want to try a different version of Soda or Cafe. You can change the runner for a particular bottle by going to Settings and then click Runner. And you'll be given a list of all the runners that you've downloaded. Simply click on one to change it. The same can be done for the Vulkan based translation layer as well. And if you scroll down you can also modify other settings or enable tools such as Gamescope, MangoHUD, Game Mode, and more. But just keep in mind that if you want to enable these tools, then you'll need to download the Flatpak versions of them. So now let's move on to a second example. Let's install an application this time. I'll be installing a DAW, which is short for Digital Audio Workstation. Now normally you'll want to create a new bottle for non-gaming applications and select an application environment instead of a gaming one. But in a lot of cases it actually doesn't matter. Many non-gaming applications will still work fine inside a gaming environment. So let's try installing a DAW in the same bottle where I already installed Epic Games. To be clear, I don't necessarily recommend doing this all the time, but I just wanted to demonstrate how some applications will run perfectly fine in a gaming environment. So I'll click on install programs and this time I'll select FL Studio which has a gold rating. You'll notice that the Windows installer pops up for this one. So simply click next and continue the installation just like you would on Windows. Now that it's done, I'll open it up and as you can see it's running this sample project without a hitch. So close, but far away. Everything works as expected. But now let's move on and do one more example. But this time instead of installing a pre-made script, let's run a Windows program directly from an exe file. Even though it wasn't necessary, I decided to create a new bottle with an application environment this time, and I simply named it Apps. I'll be running Cinebench R23 as an example, and I've already downloaded and extracted the zip file as you can see here. It's currently located in my downloads folder. But when running an exe file in bottles, it's recommended to transfer the program into your bottles drive C directory before trying to run it. This path you see here is the default location where all your bottles will be stored. And of course the name you gave your particular bottles will probably be different as well. It doesn't really matter the exact folder you transfer the program into as long as it's somewhere inside drive C. Which happens to be exactly like a regular Windows file system. I decided to place Cinebench inside my users downloads folder. So now let's try to run it. Click on Run Executable and navigate to the path where you place the program. To make it easier, I'll simply copy and paste the path here. Then select the exe file for Cinebench. And here it is. Cinebench opened up just as expected. Now I'm gonna stop the recording and close OBS before running the benchmark since the recording will probably affect the score. And now that it's done, you can see my system scored 21,592, which is typical for a Ryzen 5900X. On Windows, my score was a bit closer to 22,000, but we're only talking about 1 or 2 percent difference, which is actually pretty impressive considering how the wine translation layer does require a bit of overhead. But for all intents and purposes, the performance is basically the same when compared to Windows. So now let's move on to the last thing I wanted to show, which is Flat Seal. And this will give you more options and freedom when using Flatpak applications. Since Flatpak is a sandboxed environment, there are a few limitations. Like I said earlier, once you create a bottle in a particular location, 
Everything you want to do inside that bottle is limited to the folder that it exists in. You can't access any other folder from that bottle, which means secondary drives are also off limits. But thanks to FlatSeal, you can get around these sort of limitations. And again, this can be done with any software that was installed with Flatpak, not just bottles. So let's first search for FlatSeal and install it just like we did with bottles. Now that it's installed, I'll go ahead and open up FlatSeal. Click on Bottles on the left hand side and then scroll down to the File System section. Go to Other Files and choose the directory that you want to grant access to Bottles. I have a secondary drive here called Backup and I've created a folder in it called Games, so I'll go ahead and select that. Now make sure to add a colon followed by the letters RW just like you see here. This gives Bottles read and write access to that folder. Now let's go back to Epic Games, and this time when I install Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I can navigate to that folder I just added in FlatSeal. And it can now be used to store my games or anything else I want to do inside of my bottles. Also, keep in mind that FlatSeal can do a lot more than just this. So if you ever find yourself running into a limitation with a Flatpak program, then chances are you can get around that limitation by using flat seal. So that wraps up my introduction to bottles. Like I said before, it's not perfect and not every Windows program will work in it, but you'd be surprised how good compatibility is. Hopefully bottles proves to be useful for some of you who are switching to Linux from Windows. If you found this video to be helpful, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, if you have any thoughts or questions, then feel free to drop a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.